Okay, so this is Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi 4 and I've got a video on how to install it. And uh, the reason I'm using this is because I couldn't find the solution I wanted in Linux. Uh, and so uh, hopefully someone else can help me out with this. I did try. Uh, I'm trying to do another video. I'm just going to switch over to screen capture. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to do, uh, I've created Raspberry Pi OS, logged it into my Wi-Fi, installed the essential apps that I want, done a bit of customization, and then I wanted to create a backup image of that, which I can then restore to an SSD, a USB stick, or an SD card whenever I want. And every solution I found on Linux just uh, either used the terminal or had loads of steps and, and wasn't a case of just click and, and use. Unlike something like Raspberry Pi Imager is a perfect example, works on every system and is, is amazing. So it writes images to an SD card and also uh, erases SD cards or SSDs or USBs. It's a brilliant solution. So I'll put my SD card with my Raspberry Pi OS in a USB adapter, pop it in my Pi 4 and it will show up and Windows will recognize it. So what I want to do is I want to back up that operating system so that I can then restore it to another system. So if I go uh, Windows 32 Disk Imager is, is just brilliant for this and it installs perfectly fine into Windows on Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, we need to choose the name of the file. So if I just call it Raspberry Pi OS uh, test and this is the device that it's reading it from. So D is the uh, SD card reader. So if I now press read, what that will do is start to dump that SD card image onto the Windows device. So I'll cancel that because I've already done it, because it, it takes about six minutes, so it's not, it's not bad at all uh, for an eight gig image. Uh, so the, I've saved the image in my documents. So I'll just show you it there. So documents. Raspberry Pi OS test. So it's an eight gig image. And uh, as I say, I want to I want to do this. I want to finish off the video. So I'll go through how the operating system is, but in a separate video, because I wanted to do it all with Raspberry Pi and Linux. Uh, and I didn't want to have to use Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, not because I don't like using it, because I think it, it's, it's great and it gives me more options. And I'm often asked, uh, why would you use Windows on a Raspberry Pi 4? Well, this for me is, is actually a a very good reason because it's a simple way of doing something that I wanted to do. Uh, but as I say, I would love people to point out a way of doing it on Linux. I don't really want to use the terminal uh, because the solutions I've seen, if you've got other drives plugged in or various, there's, there's a lot of variables and I wanted to keep this nice and simple for everybody. So if I want to write that image that I've just dumped on the, the Windows computer, I'm going to plug in my SSD drive and I'll switch back out to camera to make this more clear. Here we are, so Windows 10, running from the SD card on the right hand side there, the little one with a bit of green on it, uh, and then I've got my, this is the card with Raspberry Pi OS on it, uh, which is an eight gigabyte Toshiba card in my SD card reader. Uh, so I've already dumped that onto the SD card with Windows, and now I wanna back it up onto the SSD drive, which you can see is plugged in with my USB SATA cable. Okay, so let's open up Raspberry Pi Imager, which is an excellent program. Uh, and this works on Mac OS, Windows, and Linux, uh, and Raspberry Pi. So uh, select yes. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna wipe the SSD drive because I don't know what's on it. So choose OS and go down to arrays. Choose SD card. Gotta be careful here because I've got a couple of things plugged in. There it is, 32 gig is my SSD drive. And hit right, so that will clean it off and uh, make it fresh, ready for an install. You don't always have to do this with Raspberry Pi Imager, but I'm not sure what operating system I had on here before, so it's just a safer bet. There you go, so that tells me it's been erased. So now I can do operating system, use custom, go into documents, which is where I downloaded it to, click on the image and hit open. So now that's ready to write, so it's on the SD card of this Windows 10 operating system, and I wanna put it onto my SSD drive. So choose SSD and hit right and hit yes. And it's definitely slower than Raspberry Pi Imager in Raspberry Pi OS, but it's doing its job and, uh, and it's very simple. Okay, so that's all done successfully. So let's hit continue and I can close that down. 
I can shut down Windows and I can reboot it with the SSD drive that I've just written Raspberry Pi OS to. So I'm going to unplug everything else apart from that SSD drive. Okay, so here is Raspberry Pi OS running from the SSD. So it was backed up to the Windows drive, uh, still using Raspberry Pi 4, and then restored with Raspberry Pi Imager to an SSD drive. So I can do this as many times as I like. Whenever I want a copy of Raspberry Pi OS to mess about with, I don't have to log back into my Wi-Fi. I don't have to do various different things. But at the end of this video, I'll show you the process I use to get to this stage of Raspberry Pi OS. So it's pretty much the bare bones of what I want in an operating system, customizing it, adding a few programs, logging into the Wi-Fi, getting rid of the black border, things like that, uh, and that's what I wanted to create. But I, I really would like to have a solution of being able to back it up with Linux to be able to suggest to other people who don't have access to a Windows computer. But uh, I think in this case, Windows won the day because it seemed to have an easy to use solution to back it up but I'm sure people will prove me wrong and I'm sure there's a version equally as good on Linux I just haven't found it yet anyway here's the part of the video that I'd created beforehand so creating this image of Raspberry Pi OS but thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe Okay, so I've just installed uh, a fresh copy of Raspberry Pi OS and I've installed this onto an 8 gig SD card and uh, there's a reason I've done this. You can see it says system up to date. So if I, I now need to go into restart so I'll get rid of this big black border. Okay, so the reason for this video is to basically create a backup, but a backup where I've done a few things that I always do to Raspberry Pi OS. So because I do a lot of Raspberry Pi videos, I often go back to Raspberry Pi OS because it is one of the most compatible operating systems. And obviously, if people make software and games and things like that, they generally make it for this software. Uh, you'll find that a lot of other Linux distributions don't support all the games, apps, and all the tweaks and things like that that you can get with Raspberry Pi OS. So it's a very good grounding to start off with. So I always change the background. So let's do that. I've already copied my background over to my pictures folder. So I can just add that on, click OK. Uh, I always move the bar down to the bottom. So panel settings, bottom. I also change the appearance of it. So I always like it to be solid color with opacity. Uh, and I usually pick something from the theme that kind of blends into it. So say it was this, uh, I quite like that, that sort of deep blue. Click OK. Um, and you need to change the opacity. So let's bring that up a bit, but not too much. So we get enough of the color, but it's also still slightly see-through. Another thing I do is I add temperature. And I usually customize that. I'm not going to bother today uh, because this is more about the backup. Now I always install NeoFetch. sudo apt install NeoFetch. And I've got more detailed videos on any of the bits I'm doing today. So if you just say it was NeoFetch, just search Lee PSP video and NeoFetch and you'll find out about it. So now if I type in NeoFetch, it will tell me a bit about my system. So let's close that down. And the next bit I would do would be to install PyKiss. So if I open the web browser, and the reason I've done this on an eight gig card is because when you create the backup, it creates a backup the same size as the card. And you can shrink it, there's all sorts of things you can do, but I'm happy with it being an eight gig backup because everything I need will be in there. So if I just type in PyKiss and GitHub, let's make that a full screen. There it is. And we scroll almost to the bottom and pop this in without the dollar sign. Let's copy that, let's open a terminal and paste that in. And PyKiss is amazing, if you're new to Py, uh, the games and apps and things you can get in there. Same with Pi apps, which I'll put on in a second. There you go, so that's installed. So now I'm going to install 
gparted, so sudo apt install, let's move my mouse out of the way, gparted, which is a partition manager, which could come in handy for expanding the partition uh, when you restore this image to an SSD, a USB stick, or another SD card. So now let's put pyapps on there. I can get rid of the terminal for now and pop in pyapps and again GitHub. And that's the one. And let's scroll down to this one here and copy the top line. I think it's the top line first. Uh, and to get a terminal, you can always do Control Alt T. That's another way of getting it in Raspberry Pi OS and paste. Okay, so now let's copy this second line in. Go back to that terminal and paste that in. Yes. Okay, so that's all done. So let's close all this down and we should have, yeah, we've got Pi apps on our desktop and in here we should have PyKiss. There you go. So two great programs. Uh, so with Pi apps, I'll launch Pi apps and install Commander Pi for the next bit. So execute in terminal, and the one I want is Commander Pi, which is here. So let's hit install. Now there are other things that I would install from Pi apps, but in the case of this, I'm just concentrating on the things I would definitely always install and always have on my system. Because remember, this is my backup I'm creating to restore from. So every time I want Raspberry Pi OS, I'll install this and it will come as this sort of created image. So it just means that everything's done. I don't need to log into my Wi-Fi. I don't need to overclock. I don't need to install the programs that I always need. There you go. So installed successfully. So, and it comes up on the desktop. Let's just close down that Pi apps and we'll execute. Here we go. So let's go into overclock um, because I generally always overclock. So let's do 2147 because I know that's safe on mine. Uh, GPU, I'm not too worried about GPU. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to do over voltage. So I'm going to say over voltage of 8 because that works on all of my pies. Some, some of the pies only need an over voltage of 6 for that overclock, but I'll do it as 8 because it will go with everything. So apply and reboot. And yes. Oh, I have to put something in the uh, GPU, it looks like. So let's just put something conservative. 750 will be all right. Uh, apply and reboot. And yes. 